Okay, so in this video we're just going to be dealing with how do we actually go through the process of drawing our phaser diagrams, first for an RL circuit, then an RC circuit, then an RLC circuit that's lagging, and an RLC circuit that's leading. If you're looking for more detail on how to do the calculations, that's going to be in another video. This is just purely dealing with how to draw the phaser diagram. So these are all taken from the worked examples in the book, uh, and these are taken from worked examples 15. And to draw the phaser diagram, we're assuming we've gone and worked out the voltage drop over our resistor, our inductor, our supply voltage is given to us, and we've worked out the supply current. And this is for our RL circuit. We need to work out a, a relative, a reasonable scale to draw the phaser diagram at. Now the thing to remember, when you're drawing a phaser diagram, is that the phaser diagram should only ever show the voltages and the currents. In order to draw this, we need to get a scale that's going to fit onto our page here. And I've decided that the scale I'm going to go with is going to be one centimeter is equal to 20 volts. And for that's for voltage. And that for my current, I'm going to have one centimeter equals to one amp. So what I need to do next is I need to figure out, based on this scale, what the length of everything is. And the easiest way to do that is if you've got one centimeter, 20 volts, just divide each of your voltages by your 20 centimeters and the current by one, which just stays the same. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. So now that I've worked out the, the length that all my phasers need to be on my phaser diagram, I'm ready to start drawing in the, the axis that I'm going to be working with here. Now, just a couple of things to note. When you're drawing phasor diagrams, you do need a protractor of some description, and you do need a ruler, because you're going to be drawing at specific angles, and you're going to be drawing to very specific lengths. I need to draw a line that's about 10 centimeters and 12 centimeters, so I need to make sure I'm giving myself enough space for that. And I know that this is going to be an RL circuit, so it's going to look a little bit something like this. So based on that, I'm going to give myself some axes that look like this. First of all, I'm going to draw my voltage uh, over my resistor, which is going to be 9.85, uh, 9.8 centimeters long, roughly, um, along the axis here. Now you notice I've got the angles in here as well, and that's the direction you want to be drawing the, the, ve the vector or the phasor at. Now just remember, this line is considered your zero degrees, this line is considered your plus 90 degrees, and then anything pointing down the way is considered your minus 90 degrees. Although we don't tend to write that on the phasor diagram, that's what you've got to remember it is. So, 10 centimeters going along the way. I'll just mark this up. So 9.89. So I've drawn a 9.8 centimeter line at zero degrees along, and that represents my voltage over the resistor VR. So I'm gonna label it VR. Okay, next one, I'm going to draw my voltage over my inductor is 6.88 centimeters. So I'm going to go ahead and measure off 6.8 centimeters. So that's 6.5, 6, 7, 8. Again, roughly speaking. Now that I've drawn that, I can go ahead and label that as VL. Now I can draw my voltage over the, or the supply voltage, sorry, which should be um, 12 centimeters long at an angle of 35 degrees. Put your protractor on and line up the 90 degrees with your vertical and your zero with your horizontal. And then measure around, so 10, 20, 30, five. And then take your ruler and draw a 12 centimeter line starting from your origin, zero, passing through your 35 degree mark. And in this case, it's 12 centimeters long. So finish in there. And that's me drawing my supply voltage VS. Now there's one more we need to draw here, um, which is the supply current. So let's go ahead and put that supply current in. And just to make it stand off a little bit, because I'm using felt tips, I'm going to come up a little bit and draw my 6.5 centimeter line there. Now you can see I've just elevated it slightly off the, the lower axis there. That's just because otherwise it would get um, you wouldn't see it because of the, the VR, the voltage over the resistor line there. And that is, oops, my supply current, IS. So generally speaking, this is what you should expect it to look like. 
So let me just talk you through from the perspective of someone marking it. What I'd be looking for when I'm marking this uh, as a student is that they have correctly labeled each of the phasers. So they've given them the correct name and identification. I would then, if marking it, I'd then come along and measure the different vectors, uh, different phasers. So 12 centimeters, and then based on their scale of 12 to uh, one centimeter to 20 volts, I can then calculate, well, if that's 12 centimeters, then 12 times 20 gives me 240 volts. So that is a correctly drawn uh, phaser. So again, there'd be a, a mark for correctly drawing it and um, the right length to the scale. And I'd come along and measure it as well. So I would come in here with my protractor and say, right, okay, uh, one, two, three and a half. So that's 35 degrees. So that is correct as well. So very, depending on who's marking it, that would probably be a mark for the correct name and then a correct uh, mark for the correct uh, angle and length as well. And the same would go for the other vectors. So that would be uh, two marks for that. And if we measured our voltage of the inductor, again, same idea, 6.8 or whatever that was, 6.8 centimeters times your 20 gives us um, our 137. So again, a uh, mark for the label and a correct mark for it being in the right direction and of the right scale and length. So that's getting two marks for that. Likewise, same for the voltage over the resistor, two marks and voltage, uh, sorry, this is supply current as well. Okay, so that would be eight marks probably for a phaser diagram like that. Some places a bit less, some places a bit more maybe, just depending. Um, but roughly speaking, that's what you're looking for when it comes to the RL circuit. Okay, again, uh, this time we've got an RC circuit, so you know, just remind us, resistor in series with capacitor in a single phase uh, circuit. And this is taken from the worked examples where I've already done all the calculations and we've got a voltage over the resistor of 103 volts, uh, we've got a voltage supply of 120, voltage over the capacitor of 61.8, and our supply current turns out to be 2.06 amps. Because it's an RC circuit, automatically you should be thinking, right, it's going to be a leading circuit. So I know if we're taking our uh, current as reference, we're going to end up with a circuit that looks roughly something like this, yeah? Maybe one to 10 centimeters in this case. So one centimeter uh, is 10 volts for voltage. And current is so small, I'll actually double that. So I'll say one centimeter equals half an amp. Not 0.5 amps. Now, in, in terms of selecting the scale, it's a bit of a, well, you, you kind of have to make the judgment based on the values you have. So there's no hard and fast rule of saying always do one centimeter 20 volts or uh, or anything like that. Generally speaking, what you're trying to do is you want to try and get the lines to be about about 10 centimeters long. The reason being is they'll fit on the page that way. If your lines are starting to be 15, 20 centimeters long, well, suddenly you're, you're running into problems because your page probably isn't big enough to accommodate that phaser diagram. So something roughly 10 centimeters long is going to be accurate enough and allow you to draw on the page. Okay, so let's get some let's get some scales of our uh, axes in here, axi. Now, again, I know it's a, a leading diagram, so I'm going to be giving myself more space on the downward axis. I'm going to go ahead and work out now what lengths should each of my um, my phasers be if I've got if I'm using these scales here. So I'm going to start with my voltage over the resistor. So it's going to be zero degrees. Just reminder, zero degrees minus 90, 90 degrees. Now you don't need to include that in the phasor diagram. That's just there to illustrate to you the, the angles. So we've got 10.3. So that's voltage over the resistor done. Capacitor voltage, 60, 61.8, 6.18 centimeters at minus 90 degrees. So voltage over the capacitor, voltage over the resistor. Supply voltage is at an angle of minus 30.96, so minus 31 basically. We always measure from the horizontal round, either around this way or around this way. And this, in this case, I'm going to measure to 31, so 10. 20, 1, and that's my 31 degrees mark. So now I'm going to come and draw my 12 centimeter line 
Um, a little tip is if you, when you're trying to line up your, your ruler, you might move a bit and then that kind of moves this bit out of the way and then that moves that bit. So what you can do, just as a little tip, put your pen at one end where you want the ruler to be and push your ruler up against that. And then at that point, press down there and you can see you can kind of pivot around there and then line your next bit up against or then put your pen at the next bit and push the ruler against that. And you just do that a couple times and then what happens is you've actually lined your ruler up in the right place. Now I was just getting a different pen there because these felt tips would just soak into the page if I did it too long. But anyway. And I can see the S. Supply current. So we're going to draw that 4.12 centimetres long. It's going to be zero degrees because we're taking that as the reference. So 4.1. So that's us drawn our phasor diagram, drawn all the voltages and currents required. RLC circuit, so this is where we have a resistor in series with a capacitor, in series with an inductor, or that would be an RCL circuit in this case. Same thing though, um, connected to a single phase AC supply. In this example, I've taken the scale to be one to 30 centimeters. So for voltage, one centimeter equals 30 volts then for current and um, that's fine so i get current in this case one centimeter is one amp so i've got my lengths now i know that each of the lengths need to be about 11 centimeters about 10 centimeters so my vl is going to be 11 centimeters so i need enough space for that to go up the way um, and my VC is going to be 7.8 centimeters, so there needs to be enough space for that to go down the way. So let's just figure this out. So 11 and 7. So I need to extend this a little bit. So what I was doing there was I wanted to make sure that I had enough space to get my 11 centimeter line going up the way for VL, and I also had enough space to get my well 8 centimeter line going down the way for VC. VR is 9.26 centimeters at zero degrees. So VL is 11.6 facing up the way. VC is 7.86, 7.9 we'll call that, 7. Point. And lastly, IS is 11.1 centimeters. And then lastly, our supply voltage is uh, 300 or 10 centimeters at 22.19 degrees, 22.2. I, oh, VS, not IS, VS. So that's my supply voltage marked up there. Now just to complete things to show you the last, this is going to be an RLC circuit that's leading. So in other words, we've got a bigger capacitive reactance than we do inductive reactance. And as a result, it's creating a leading, um, a leading current. But again, we're going to take uh, current as reference still. So exactly the same process as before. I'm going to work out uh, my scale here based on the sizes. Um, work out the lengths that I'm going to be drawing them to on the, vec the phasor diagram, then we'll, we'll draw it together. Change over again. So 6.7, So we can say VR. And then VL is going to be 4.43 at 90. VC is going to be 8.6. And then my supply voltage is going to be 8 centimeters at 26.6. Okay, so the last one to draw here is our current. So I'm going to do that now. That is us drawn all four phasor diagrams. 
in this case the RLC uh, leading phasor diagram is pointing down the way um, and if any time you've got a leading circuit where you get, as I say, you've got a bigger react, uh, capacitive reactance than inductive reactance, it should again look roughly like this. Okay. I um, hope you found that interesting, hope you found that useful. If you're looking for more on the calculations and how you get to these numbers in the first place, check out some of my other videos because I will be going into detail on that. Alright guys, see you later.